What's up, internets? Welcome back to Octopath Traveler, and today we're going to be talking all about stats, particularly the base stats of the eight main characters of Octopath Traveler. So the reason why I'm making this video is a couple of reasons. First of all, it's just to give us all a better idea of what the stat spreads for each of the characters are, so that whenever it's time for us to make a decision of what secondary job you want to give them, this will give us a better, clearer understanding of what the main strengths and weaknesses of the characters are are. The other reason why I wanted to make this video is because I've received a lot of like requests to make videos about who I consider to be the best quote-unquote uh, optimized secondary job combination for each character and the thing is I can't really give uh, a good answer for that one outside of what I already know because remember the game is still pretty young there's plenty of stuff left to discover but in terms of what has worked for me in my first playthrough because you know I, I was doing a pretty good job of finishing this in a timely fashion and uh, most of the ones that I did uh, pick out for the secondary job have worked out quite well so I'll, I will be giving my recommendations they're no they're by no means like the best of the best or anything like that these just worked out for me and my play style because everyone plays differently and I think that's the thing that we need to appreciate in a game like this uh, but yeah I'm just gonna give my recommendations and just go over what each of the stat gains for the secondary jobs will be too so without further ado let's start things off with Ophelia Ophelia uh, looking at this little decagon that the people at reddit were kind enough to make um, this particular decagon shows that she has very high SP in her base stats high physical defense and high elemental defense and then she has very middling hp physical attack and speed uh actually very low speed and accuracy crits evasion so the thing is whenever it comes to picking a secondary job for these classes uh you kind of have to make a decision between like do you want to accentuate their strengths their already inherent strengths do we want to bring up her sp to higher levels let's just say or do i want to patch up her weaknesses by kind of giving her the class that like kind of upgrades her stats in all the other categories or the third option which is my favorite way of looking at things is like she's already a built-in cleric are there any other secondary jobs that give me abilities that kind of help that uh, synergize with her cleric abilities or something that she can do to kind of fulfill whatever role I wish for her to have. But before I get into that, I also want to look into the stat gains that you get if you assign cleric as a secondary job. So when you're a cleric and you're, or you turn someone else into a cleric, they get an increase to their max SP by a solid 18% and their elemental attack and elemental defense both go up by 5%. So it's pretty good overall and you'll actually notice that this is a recurring trend for most of the characters where they're best stats tend to kind of translate into what other characters are going to become because again you can see over here that Ophelia she was meant to be sort of a like defensive support utility type character and the thing is like the one that I personally used was strangely enough warrior warrior is so weird because the warrior class increases your HP physical attack and defense which is like all the all of her bad skills except for physical defense she's a good one over there and the reason why I did this though is because Ophelia in my opinion makes a very decent tank like a support tank if you will because the saving grace ability that she has fast access to by virtue of starting off as a cleric you give her saving grace you overheal your yourself with Ophelia and then you can use insight to continue tanking things she is a very high SP so she can continuously spam HP heals for the entire party and then she can tank things with her high elemental defense and physical defense and her low HP stat is already patched up by virtue of saving grace so that's exactly what I did if you want you can try giving her something like dancer to make her a full-on support me personally I I didn't do that because I prefer to have all of the different support abilities on different characters because I would like to have one very powerful character get all the buffs all in one turn and then the next one we just obliterate the enemy encounter but again everyone plays differently you might disagree with that but yeah personally I went uh, starting off as warrior kind of would move over to apothecary because I felt like I needed just a little bit more HP but for the most part though it was Ophelia the warrior for me for quite some time Next up to bat is going to be Cyrus, and Cyrus is pretty obvious what his stat spread would be. Uh, the highest elemental attack stat in the game, great elemental defense, great SP, decent physical defense, um, good evasion, okay speed, 
and okay crit and extremely low accuracy but that doesn't matter because he's a mage and spells do not miss so the thing about the scholar class is that it increases your sp by 13 percent increases your elemental attack by 10 percent and your elemental defense goes up by five percent and the cool thing about cyrus is that this is the case where unlike with ophelia because in ophelia i kind of wanted to patch up her weaknesses this time around i want to capitalize on cyrus's best stats and of course that is very obviously his elemental attack i love building up elemental damage in this game it's just a lot of fun to do you explore go to everhold tunnel give yourself a knowledge staff if you want to buy an elemental augmentor or anything you want to do but when it comes to giving him an alternate class like there's plenty of options dancer is like one of the best options i find because not only do you increase your elemental attack by eight percent you also increase your speed and evasion by ten percent plus he does come with the uh the dark element which is one of the few elements that he's actually missing so that's one thing you can do too uh, another option would be the merchants if you feel like wind damage would be more beneficial it doesn't give you the massive boost in elemental attack that dancer does but it still does get the job done and personally that's the one that i've been using so yeah any anywhere between those two that's quite good and then for any of your other characters keep in mind that the scholar class has the highest elemental attack boost out of all the main basic jobs anyway so yeah keep that in mind if you want to boost up the elemental attack damage if you want to have two spell casters on your team but uh, that yeah that's exactly what it was Cyrus. For Cyrus, I went Merchant because I need the Wind Element and uh, like some nice utility with Donate BP if need be. So yeah, yeah, that's gonna be that. Speaking of Donate BP, uh, here's Tressa. Tressa is going to be the next one on our team and the thing about Tressa, what's so interesting is that she has very middling stats, uh, kind of decent physical defense, decent physical attack and elemental attack and uh, very bad accuracy, which I thought was so weird because, you know, if spells don't miss, wouldn't it be more optimal to have more elemental attack and less physical attack? But then I realized that the thing about Tressa and being the merchant class in general is that you have access to hired help and hired help is extremely useful in the early game it kind of falls off part way through but honestly like in the early game it's invaluable particularly against certain bosses you get yourself access to the sword the dagger the axe and the light elements which is quite rare so the thing about tressa is that she is totally a utility character in every sense of the word before i talk about that let's talk about the merchant class and the stat gains that it gives you the merchant class uh, gives you a ton of different stats uh, very middling middling returns here but we get plus eight to your hp physical attack and physical defense go up by three percent uh, max sp goes up by eight percent elemental attack and elemental defense also go up by three percent it's all kind of reflective of her own deca uh, decagon over here but personally by virtue of just being super utility based particularly with donate bp i wanted to make sure that she can kind of kind of patch up her low sp and what better way to do that than by stealing sp so i've actually personally spec her as a thief thief is a really fun skill to play as uh, they have decent damage too and she has decent damage herself uh, you do miss out a little bit because you know there's low accuracy but it doesn't kick in that much only i find that accuracy matters a lot more for bosses or enemies that are higher level than you so yeah don't worry about that too much but essentially yeah i want to make her a thief because it gives her the dagger it gives her the like, she already has a spear and bow to work with so that's good and uh yeah so that's exactly what i did other things that you may wish to do if you want to make her a better spellcaster you can give her the scholar or if you want to go full-on utility you can try for cleric if you want to i mean you can't really lose with giving tressa different jobs because she gets awesome awesome uh, outfits every single time so yeah like world zero oyster with tressa it's just plenty of options but personally i went for thief on this one uh, next one's gonna be Ulbrich, and the funny thing about Ulbrich is I've made a video about him quite recently uh, regarding his uh, my preferred secondary class for him. Before we do that, let's look at the Decagon. Uh, according to this one, it says that he has the highest HP stat in the game, the highest physical defense stat in the game, and she's tied with a certain other character for the highest physical attack in the game. He has a great crit stat and a decent speed and decent accuracy and very very bad elemental defense sp elements attack you know the stats for smart people he doesn't have any of those and low evasion he's basically designed to be the prototypical warrior archetype of rpgs and honestly that's exactly what i want to accentuate when you spec another character as a warrior you increase their hp by 18 percent increase their physical attack and defense by five percent which can be quite nice and the thing about the warrior class is that they give you access to the surpassing power. So there's a good chance that the majority of your characters will be specking as a warrior sooner or later, usually later, but 
Yeah, so Ulbrich, I've actually wanted to kind of capitalize on his already impressive HP. And what better way to do that than with the Apothecary? The Apothecary has the highest HP boost out of all of the classes, and that's exactly why I want to see here. Now, let's mention that I like the idea of giving him the ability to use an axe. So you get the sword, the spear, and the axe, so you kind of fulfill the uh, the Fire Emblem weapon triangle, as it were. But that's what I did, though. Uh, you give him that, make him a little bit bulkier. He kind of does tank things easily anyway, and your armor is going to make up the difference for his elemental defense and his physical defense. I mean, when you reach late game, most of the enemies in 45 danger levels are going to hit like like double digits or low triple digits against this guy because he's just super bulky i love it but uh, yeah i went apothecary just for more hp and apothecary is just a very useful skill overall if ever you're grinding and then you're fighting a, or you're fighting against a boss and the boss poisons you you want to make sure you can patch that up as soon as you can so uh, yeah that's exactly why i did that so uh, let's go ahead and move on Okay, so moving on, we're going to be looking at Primrose the Dancer, as looking at the stats that you get for when you spec someone else as a dancer, I've mentioned before with Cyrus, is uh, Elemental Attack plus 8 and 8%, and then Speed and Evasion are going to be plus 10%, which is crazy good. And the thing about Primrose, you'll actually notice from her stat spread that she is the fastest character in the game, and that's very, very good. Speed is super useful in this game by just virtue of, you know, going first in a turn, there's all these things you can do, you can really get the momentum going, and you can make your life easier for the rest of your party, so that's exactly what we want to look at. She also has high elemental defense, um, high is not defense, elemental attack, the second highest elemental attack out of all the characters, a good crit rate, good evasion, lowish accuracy accuracy, okay physical attack, bad physical defense, and bad HP. Uh, that's exactly what you'd think though, like she is kind of a very very fast support slash caster. And uh, on that note though, one very good suggestion that I would give is just give her another Scholar. Uh, scholar is just really really fun to use because again, you can hit twice per hits or per spell cast on the entire group, which is very useful. You increase her SP just a little bit more, and you give her the highest elemental attack bonus that you can for base jobs, and elemental defense can increase too. But yeah, you, all, you always want that damage. She's a bit squishy, but you want to have as much damage as you can. Not to mention that by giving her more elemental coverage, and if you can use this in, in tandem with Cyrus if you really wanted to, where you can just kind of break down the guard of the bosses as quickly as you can, but uh, yeah, like Scholar works really nicely. Thief can be cool too, just because Thief has the uh, application of getting more SP. Although you don't really gain any weapon types, it just you just get Sword essentially, which might or might not be her cup of tea. Or you can try for Merchant to really kind of boost her utility. There's plenty of options for Primrose, and I think about it, like you can give her Cleric so that like after you do a dance, you can just do some heals if you don't feel like using your attack power. Uh, merchants, again, like donate BP is like such a good move to use anyway. Uh, plenty of options. They, you, you really can't go wrong with Primrose. That being said, you can't really go wrong with that, all the characters in this game. There's no like quote unquote waste of, uh, of a spec. Some people might find it weird, but honestly, they're not playing the game with you, so <laughs> why do you care? So yeah, that's Primrose though. I would recommend Scholar, that's what I used, and uh, we're gonna move on to Alfin now. Alfin is a really interesting character. His stat spread is a lot different from what I expected it to be, but it's it's okay. So he has a, a high crit stat, a uh, high HP and physical attack and physical defense, and okay SP, low elemental attack, low elemental, um, let's see, low accuracy, low speed, and okay elemental defense. So the thing about Alfin and the Apothecary's, like the Apothecary class in general, has very, very high HP gains and very low gains everywhere else, but you know, you get it everywhere, so it's better than nothing. You get a 1.5% increase to the following, to physical attack, physical defense, critical rate, and elemental attack. So yeah, it's all middling all around. Thing about this guy is that you can kind of do like the reverse Ulbrich, where uh, you can be an apothecary becoming a warrior, so that you can make him a little bit more tanky. And then kind of like give him more weapons to work with again, fulfilling that fire emblem tr weapon triangle. And he, he has a really decent critical rate, so you really can't go wrong. You can totally go for that. Other options might even be Dancer if you were so inclined. Get some of that nice, that nice little burlesque going on, I suppose. Uh, yeah, kind of give him the, uh, yeah, give him the dance so that he can buff up other people or just himself if you really want to because the damage is pretty good. 
Other things might even be like Hunter. Hunter is a very nice class that I'll get into very, very soon, but you will increase his damage and critical rate that way. Uh, plenty of options for Elfin too, but personally the way that I would have gone with it is Warrior, because again, Warrior being the reverse Ulbrich means that you have utility with the, with the Rehabilitate skill. Uh, it's just really nice overall, and honestly, if you like Alfin, then yeah, just stick with him if you want to. So, next up is going to be Therian, one of my favorite characters in this game. And the cool thing about Therian is that, yeah, he starts off as a thief, and according to his stat spread, he has the highest evasion stats in the game, surprising no one. Uh, high critical rate, high speed, high accuracy, low elemental defense, okay elemental attack, low SP, and decent physical attack, physical defense, and HP. Now, the funny thing about him being a thief class is that his low SP actually doesn't matter because he can just steal the SP back. This is the exact same, exact same thing that I mentioned with Tressa, but if you can just con consistently steal the SP, then it should be okay, and you're free to use the SP however you wish. And he has a decent elemental attack stats, but I don't use it too much. What I do use him as, though, is a cleric. A cleric is super useful with Darien because he can just easily dodge all the physical attacks if, like, an enemy does a sweep attack on you. Dodge that, heal everyone else that got hit for being too slow, and then you can just steal the SP back. It's just, it's really, really simple. Not to mention that by virtue of being a thief, he can just use armor corrosive, which is so useful and you can increase the defense or the elemental defense of your party members or himself for that matter for being a cleric again like i said plenty of options if you want you can go for like the reverse tressa uh make him a merchant if you wish which i've been playing around with hunter might also be a good idea for increasing his attack power i yeah plenty of options for this guy there's a lot you can do give him dancer for all i care just make him even faster and more evasive and that could still totally work out. Of course, he doesn't gain any extra weapons that way, but you might not necessarily use him as a damage dealer. So, like, most, the majority of his damage is going to be from stealing HP and SP anyway. So, really, really can't go for a loss on this one. And last, but finally not least, is my favorite character in the entire game, Hanit. Now, Hanit is really, really cool because in her stat spread, as you can see on the screen right now, uh, there is a, um, a tie for the highest physical attack in the game. She's high with Ulbrich. She also has the highest crit rate in the game and the highest accuracy, which is very good. She has decent evasion and decent elemental attack and okay physical defense, but terrible speed and terrible SP and terrible elemental defense. So a lot of the knee-jerk reaction for a lot of people is to make her a warrior and that works and that totally works if you want. Uh, she has access to all of the weapons. There's plenty that she can do with like you know all of her hunter skills like hunter is just an amazing class overall not just in terms of the physical uh, not the physical um the stat gains that it gives you but just the skills that it has but uh, i'm not gonna talk about that let's talk about the stats uh increase your physical attack by eight percent increase your accuracy and critical rate by six percent and your speed and evasion is increased by five percent a piece it's very very good and you could give her Warrior if you wish. Uh, I was weird. I, I, I went Apothecary because I figured, oh, cool, use more Axe abilities. That's going to be fun. Uh, that's literally how I did my first Chapter 4 with her, actually. I just went Apothecary because I wanted to give her more HP. And that's kind of like what my mindset was at the time, kind of patching up her very low base HP with Apothecary. But another thing you may be inclined to do, uh, this is another, like, I actually picked really weird ones for my first playthrough because I was, I was more concerned with skills than I was with, than I was with stats. Uh, I actually picked Scholar, which is so strange because she has just an okay elemental attack to work with. The reason why I did that is because I used it in tandem with Cyrus and then we just constantly hit the enemy with the same element spells to make sure that the break was, um, accessible as soon as possible and then just went full boost with the golden axe and that helps me get through a lot of boss battles uh, it wasn't necessarily the most optimal way of playing but it was my favorite way to do it and honestly it's what got me through most of the stories in such a timely fashion because i managed to beat this game like a few days after the game even released but uh, yeah that's exactly what i did though scholar Really, really fun stuff. There's so many different options in this game. That's the beauty of Octopath Traveler is that there's so much room for customization and freedom in this game that people are free to just experiment with whatever they wish with their favorite characters, and it would still be completely usable. Obviously, this doesn't apply to post-game dungeon, but the thing is, though, post-game dungeon is just one 
facets of this game. You can't really apply it to the whole thing. And honestly, that's kind of why we play these games, though. We have fun with the characters that we enjoy so much. And honestly, like, again, experimentation is kind of what brings the fan base together, or what should bring a fan base together, because everyone has their own playstyle. Everyone has their own way of dealing with problems. And I just found that, yeah, like, kind of Hanit's kind of, kind of encapsulated that by going scholar every once in a while. There were plenty of different options. I, I didn't want to talk about the secret jobs because that would be a whole other thing to go for too. Not to mention that those are exceedingly limited, so more often than not, they would switch roles every once in a while anyway. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty sure you guys know what I'd pick for Warmaster. It can't, it can't be that non-obvious, but uh, yeah, that's, this is pretty much what it is. Uh, these are all the stats. Uh, shout out to the people at Reddit that put together these Decagons, could not have uh, been able to make this video without that. And uh, also, just one other thing I wanted to mention is that, yeah, th this is exactly what I used. Like, all the recommendations that I put out, these are the ones that I used, and if you guys want to use them, great. If not, uh, feel free to send off in the comments below and tell me which ones you guys used. And if you can, try to tell me which ones you guys used to beat the Chapter 4s, because I find that those are the ones where you really have to take out your notepads and figure out what works best for you and what doesn't. I really want to hear about that. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching this video about stats, and as usual, I will see you guys next time. Take care, everyone.